So in this video, I wanna walk through deploying a new VDI deployment using Server Manager. Now this is based on the assumption you already have your Windows 8 or 8.1 image that you're gonna use as the template for these new virtual machines. And what this should look like, it should be a virtual machine that it should be in an off state that you've already run the sysprep on. And when you run that sysprep, in addition to the normal OBE, generalize, shutdown, you also wanna use the slash mode colon VM. Because this tells it it's gonna be used for a virtual machine and it doesn't need to wipe out the hardware information. Because the hardware information is gonna be the same, provided it stays on the same hypervisor. So it just makes it more efficient. Now if this was a brand new environment, I could fire up Server Manager, I can do the add roles and features, and I could do this remote desktop services installation. And I could do, for example, a standard, or I could do a quick start where it deploys everything on the single box. I can select I wanted the virtual machine or I could do a session based and it would carry on through. But what I wanna do in this example, I'm gonna take an existing collection I have. So I have RDS already up and running. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a VDI deployment to this. So what I'm gonna do, under my tasks, I'm gonna create a virtual desktop collection. I give it a collection name, so let's call it VDI Col. So this is gonna be pulled virtual desktops. I is gonna be a bunch of virtual machines, and each time a user connects, they might connect to a different virtual machine, and it's gonna get cleaned each time they log off. And I want it to automatically create and manage these virtual desktops. Personal is where it will be linked to a specific user for each desktop and it would always use the same one. I don't wanna do that. So now it's gonna go through and look at all the VMs and I'm gonna select that template virtual machine. It's doing a quick check. And now do I wanna provide unattended installation settings via a wizard or do I wanna specify a sysprep file? I'm just gonna actually use the wizard so I say what time zone I wanna be in. I can select a particular organizational unit name. So I'm gonna be in Savile Tech. And for my OU, maybe I'll stick them all in my VDI clients, organizational unit that I've created. Then who do I want to be able to have access to this VDI deployment? So my default is everyone. And how many virtual desktops do I wanna create in this thing? So I'm only gonna create two and it's gonna have a suffix of zero, then one, then two to name them. I could call it VDI, anything I want in here. Something that helps you distinguish. I specify the host I wanna to use to actually store these virtual machines on. Where I actually wanna store these virtual machines. And notice this option to automatically roll back the virtual desktop when the user logs off. As we'll see once this is created, this is gonna create a checkpoint called RDV underscore rollback that is gonna be a clean state. And every time the user logs off, that checkpoint will be reapplied. I can say, where do I want these virtual machines to actually be stored? So on my Hyper-V host, I wanna put these in a specific folder. I wanna put it into my virtuals. So I'm gonna specify that location. Do I want to use user profile disks? And I'm actually going to turn that off. Maybe I'm using running profiles or UEV or folder redirection already, and I don't require that capability. Because normally what this will do is this will create VHD file for each user and move it between whichever VDI image they're using. So it gives them a consistent experience. But if I'm using roaming profiles, if I'm using UEV, if I'm using folder redirection, I don't need it. So it's now going to show me everything it's going to do. That looks good. And I hit create. So this is now gonna go away and go through the creation process of this VDI environment. And what I'll start to see is it's now gonna go ahead and create these virtual desktops. So for example, on the Hyper-V host, what I would start to see is I'll see these VMs created on the file system. For example, I'll start to see some images created. So I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Once it's actually got going. So what you can see is it's currently still busy exporting that template. Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna be very efficient with the disk space. 
instead of it actually creating duplicate virtual hard disks for every VM, it's actually going to use this as the basis. It's going to create a new VHD based on this. And then what it will actually do is create differencing disks for all those other virtual machines. As you can see, it's now created my VDI collection. And in here, I can see that template image. So now it's got that VHDX file, which is the template to use for all the others. It can now start to go about actually creating these virtual desktops in the virtual desktop collection itself. If I check in Hyper-V, and this takes some time. So I still can't see them yet. Keep checking back. So here I can see it's actually started to create those virtual machines. So if I go back, see it's still saying creating, but on the Hyper-V host itself, what I now see is that VDI-0. That's actually up and running. On the file system, I can see it's now created that VDI-0 folder. And we have this child virtual hard disk. You can see if I actually do a git VHD on that disk, that VDI zero, it actually shows us it's a differencing disk. So it's only storing the changes from the parent. And I can see the parent is that VHDX file that it copied. So it's actually using differencing disks for those child virtual machines. So it's now created VDI zero, and now it's creating VDI one. So it's creating the second virtual machine. And if you look, notice what we have. We actually have this RDV rollback has been created automatically. So this is what it's going to use after a user logs on and then may make some changes or modify the OS in some way. We want to make sure that second user who then goes and connects that same VM later on doesn't have all that leftover changes that that person may have done. So by reapplying this clean state, this RDV rollback after each logon, we can protect the integrity of that virtual machine. I go back now, I can say it's still going through that creation, but I also have that second differencing disk as well. So if I now go and look at that's the clean state. The reason we have another AVHDX file is remember it created a checkpoint. So the checkpoint would be this VHDX file, and then the current running state would be the differencing from the time it created the checkpoint. Likewise, VDI1 will have exactly the same configuration it's not created the checkpoint yet so we don't have the avhdx file so if i go and look there's no checkpoint yet once the checkpoint gets created i to that clean state then we'll actually go and see we'll get that differencing file created but if i change this and if i actually go up and i go to vdi-1 virtual hard disks and do the same get We'll actually see once again, it's a differencing. And once again, it's the child of that same parent. So if you're just rolling this out in production, I mean, there are some things you would have to consider. If I was running out 100, 200, 500 VDI images, obviously this one parent image that's on the file system here is gonna get a lot of read activity from it. So I would want this on the very high tier of storage, like SSD is something very high performant. Now, if I was using storage spaces, for example, or a SAN, that's probably going to automatically get moved around to make sure it's on the most performant storage I have. But if not, you may want to make sure you really do put that storage, that template file on sort of your best disks. You want to make sure you do going to get the highest level of performance possible. So that's it's created successfully. I can now go and see I have that VDI. They're both in save state. And what will happen is when someone actually tries to connect, it will basically bring that VM out of the save state so it can then start to actually be used. But meanwhile, they're sitting there quite happily, ready to be used in the environment and logged on to. The other great thing is I actually have my web portal. Let me just log on quick. And what I will see is that VDI collection has been automatically added. 
So through this same interface, I can see my published applications and I can see the VDI collections. And likewise, if I was using app publishing, for example, to my start screen or my start menu in Windows 7 sort of enterprise ultimate, that's gonna appear as well. So it's very, very seamless and that easy to get to. So that's it. That's how hard it was to really go and set up a VDI environment. And I can obviously click on this thing and say connect. What it's now gonna do is if I look, it would have brought one of them out of the save state. So I'm now connecting to it. It's then logging me on using my credential. So it's preparing if it was pulling my profile down, for example, UEV pulling bits of my profile down. It's getting it ready for my first use. So that's it, I'm now logged on. So this is my VDI environment. This is now this user experience that they can go and run Explorer. They could run Office if it was installed. I mean, this is now just a desktop. And remember though, it's really not that different from session virtualization, which is where it's just a user session on a shared server operating system. So for example, I can access Internet Explorer on this thing. I can browse the web. So I start up Internet Explorer on this virtual desktop image over here. Likewise, if I just established a regular session virtualization connection to an RDS host, so a session host here, let's do that in parallel. I just wanna show the similar experience. It goes to a start screen and I can fire up Internet Explorer. And I really get exactly the same experience. They can run the same applications. So only if I was a power user that I really cared, VDI is a better option, but you have both in Windows. So you can make the choice. And now I've done a day's work. I'm whatever I need to do. From here. I go to my settings, my power. And in this case, I just need to disconnect and I'm done for this session. I don't need to use it anymore. So now I've gone from there. And that's the VDI experience. Like I say, when the user's disconnected and logged off, it'll reapply that checkpoint and get it back to a nice clean state. But that was really, really quickly how to deploy a VDI collection.